You're from Canada. I was actually born in the States, but okay. I was raised in Canada, and that's where I live now. So. How is the Communist Republic of Canada <laughs> going, I, or what, is that too hard? You know, so when people used to say that, I'd be like, no, okay, just calm pull down. Pull that up to your mouth pull just a, to my little mouth a little bit. bit more. There we yep. go. How's this? Yep, yep, yep. Yep. I used to say that's a little bit too harsh, Yeah. Uh, but especially with the assisted suicide regime that's been metastasizing and growing ever since it came in in 2016, um, Canada is, I think, objectively in very rough shape right now. Uh, some of your listeners will know, your viewers will know that in 2015, our Supreme Court mandated that they legalize assisted suicide. They started to steadily move away from calling it assisted suicide because suicide, of course, is a trigger word for many people, obviously. Yep. So now they call it medical aid and dying or MAID, which makes it sound far more compassionate, right? Like your loved one will get put to death like a household pet. And uh, now they've actually just, they legalized it for those with mental illness. And, and then this month they delayed it for a year to get it right because all the horror stories have been trickling in about people um, opting for assisted suicide because they're poor, uh, because they're disabled, because they can't afford the care that they need. And so basically Canada's turned into an international cautionary tale in about 24 months. And I don't think anybody is fully cognizant of how bad it's going to look just under a year from now if if they do start permitting assisted suicide for for those with mental illness because at that point uh the only thing you'll need to be eligible for assisted suicide is feeling suicidal so the government will be endorsing your cognitive distortions and will actually be facilitating and funding uh, your own death mm. so and canada's not doing great is that the primary reason what about covid lockdowns and things what was that like Could people come up to me on the street and yeah. they say like things about Australia. I'm like, dude, I haven't been there. I don't know. Like I, I hear it was rough in Australia, but what was it like in Canada? What is it still like? So in Canada, it varied. So it's, it's, it's over in Canada now, unless you talk to the prime minister who every once in a while genuflects in that direction just to assure everybody that he wasn't making things up prior before. <laughs> but like each province was kind of different at, at the height of one of the waves. I forget. It was very wavy for a while. Um, there was like pretty much everybody, I think, had some sort of stay at home order or lockdown. I think the, the big news out of Canada, of course, was that they, the Freedom Convoy descended on Ottawa with hundreds of truckers and thousands of people and Were kind of there? walked the Capitol down. I, I went there to cover it like right before the crackdown, right before they sent in all the cops. Um, and the scandal that doesn't get talked about nearly enough in Canada with relation to COVID is that based on the dates we have now from the Pfizer data and from what Justin Trudeau was saying, he ran a whole election on this idea that you didn't have to sit next to the unclean on a plane or a train. And there was mandates for like interprovincial travel, like you couldn't fly from Ontario to BC mm. to visit a dying relative if you were not fully vaccinated. Mm -hmm. um, and we now know that Pfizer already knew before this mandate went in that it didn't stop transmission, which was the fundamental basis mm -hmm. for the mandate to begin with and yeah no, nobody seems to be really picking up on that in the mainstream media as much as i'd like because it's an obvious political scandal he actually made the vaccine more political than it already was by running a whole election on it so yeah mm -hmm. that wasn't great either so what kind of pushback is the uh, euthanasia position getting in canada is there yeah, here's the most like depressing thing about about euthanasia and assisted suicide in Canada is that when when euthanasia was legalized by the Supreme Court in 2015, it was about 80 20. 80% 80 of Canadians supported assisted suicide, 20% opposed. Now, with the expansion uh, of of medical aid and dying to those who suffer from from mental illness or mm. or it'll be disability it'll be basically anything the the it, the laws worded so vaguely that anybody who isn't receiving care that they think adequately treats their condition can can apply for this and be eligible it just basically means everybody and like for the first time we're seeing the polls shift the majority of Canadians actually oppose this and what's what's so almost confusing about the way this government and the justice minister, David Lametti, um, is that not only are the majority of Canadians opposed to this, because everybody knows somebody who struggles with mental illness or has struggled with mental illness. Pretty much all of us know somebody who has struggled with suicidal ideation or, mm -hmm. or has attempted suicide at some point. And the parliamentary committees have been hearing testimony from disability rights groups, from the Canadian Association for Suicide Prevention, from mental health advocates. And it's been almost a complete and unanimous no to this this policy expansion. And they're not backing down. And in fact, you had uh, uh, a very prominent doctor from Quebec who runs one of the gyne gynecological societies um, and pediatric societies come out and say, we should actually consider legalizing assisted suicide for infants under the age of one 
Dear Lord. With, like, severe disability, etc. And, as you know, you can't assist somebody in suicide below the age of one. And so, basically, he just openly advocated for euthanizing babies. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the headlines that was really on point, but kind of jarring to read in a national newspaper, was Canada cannot become a country that kills its babies. Now, of course, we already do up until nine months through abortion. Um, but, like, that was as a headline... In a national newspaper, right? Not on some pro-life site or socially conservative-oriented media outlet. No, this was just, this was straight up in a national newspaper. Um, I think that even with that, the thing that ter genuinely terrifies me the most, as somebody who has mental illness running on both sides of his family, and one of my kids could easily have it just based on their genetics, is uh, that they're also advocating for assisted suicide for what they call mature minors which basically means somebody who's not old enough to drink, vote, or drive, but somebody who is apparently mature enough to make the decision to opt for assisted suicide. And in the parliamentary documents, it actually says that although we understand parents would be very opposed to this, um, we have to recognize that the right of that child to suicide would override their parents' right. desire oh to goodness. keep them around, which means that a euthanasia provider yeah. could go into the family home, could euthanize the child in the family home, with oh. the force of the state preventing the parents from intervening. And this is not some wild theory. You can read this in the doc. Once you, once you read what the documents actually say, this is what they're advocating for. And so this genuinely terrifies me in a way that nothing's terrified me before. Like, as you know, I work for a pro-life organization. Um, I've been working on issues like abortion for years. But this is an issue where I don't think those who support it fully realize what the implications are. And I don't think people who are ignoring this as another culture war issue at the top recognize that this will have a very real impact on their family at some point, especially because we have absolutely piss poor care for for those who suffer from mental illness mm -hmm. and of course coming out of uh, coming out of covid we have a, a mental health pandemic hey thanks for watching that clip would you like this beautiful very high quality definitely not made in china not that there's anything wrong with that pints with aquinas beer stein for free sent to your door would you also like a copy of the jill sent to your door four times a year this is the Pints with Aquinas newspaper, by the way. If you do, go to mattfrad.locals.com and become an annual supporter for any amount. We'll send you that stuff for free and you get a bunch of other free things in return. You'll get more information by going over to mattfrad.locals.com. Thanks.